What's going on? I'm Gizmo, and I'm going in the DMs with Matt Scarillo. I'm from the East Coast, specifically Rhode Island. I'm 21 years old, and I make rap music, really aggressive rap music. Why do you call yourself Gizmo? Uh, I call myself Gizmo, uh, well, Gizmo from like the Gremlins, like the movie Gremlins, uh, because that is one of my favorite movies and it always has been like ever since I was growing up and shit. And I feel like it represents me pretty well because Gizmo himself in the movie, he can be chill and he can be like nice, cute and cuddly. You know, that can be like my soft side or whatever, making like, you know, soft music, or whatever. But if you fuck with him, you know, you expose him to water or, you know, you feed him after midnight, then the gremlins come out and it, the fuck shit happens. And that's me when I'm going crazy. How long have you been making music and also what inspires you to create it? Uh, I've been making music since like eighth grade. I like made my first rap song and ever since then I haven't really stopped. Literally in eighth grade, like when I first started making music and I wanted to post it somewhere, I didn't know where to post it. There was like Audio Mac and like that piff and shit like that, but you had to like pay to use it or something like that. So I literally just Googled like upload your music free and SoundCloud came up. This was like literally back in like 2011. And then that's like when I made my SoundCloud profile and I've had the same one ever since. What made you start your music career? I guess like what made me take it serious is just the fact that I loved making music so much. I was probably over passionate about it at the time, but it just made me dive in and just go all the way 100%, you know, no backing out, life or death. Like if I'm not doing this, I'm gonna die. So like thinking that way just kind of made it so you know every day i get up like this is what i'm about this is what i'm gonna do you have to really be about it, it goes with anything you want to do if if you know you feel like you have no purpose in life figure out what it is you love it could be anything in the world and put your 100 percent all into it and you will make it happen that's the craziest thing about human beings is like everyone thinks, oh, you know, human beings are so normal, you know, like, well, why aren't there superheroes? Human beings literally have the superpower to do whatever the fuck you want. So if you love something and you want to do something, you know, put your 100% all into it and you will get good at it and you, you will do it. And that's on me. Who do you dream of collaborating with? At the moment, I don't necessarily dream of collaborating with anyone. I still feel like I need to focus on myself and push myself, but... I guess dream collaborations, one of them would definitely be Gucci Mane, but I don't know. I haven't liked his new stuff ever since he got out of jail, but it would still be still be crazy for me. Maybe Jadakiss. I like Jadakiss a lot, always have. I don't know, maybe Jack White. That would be cool. I really like the White Stripes when they were together. What other artists inspire you besides Waka Flocka? Uh, a walk of flock of flame definitely inspires me a lot. Jada Kiss, Lil Wayne, Gucci Mane, bands like Rage Against the Machine, Nine Inch Nails, uh, Alice in Chains, Tool. If you weren't rapping, what would you be doing? If I wasn't rapping, I'd probably either be like a photographer or Maybe a swimmer, I don't know. I, I swam all the way through high school. I was like pretty good at it, but I hated it. I fucking hated swimming. Uh, photographer, I literally went into college for photography. I was only in it for like a month because they wouldn't let me touch the equipment. And I was taking rap music way too seriously at that point. So I just dropped out and moved to California. But yeah, I plan on after you know, like rapping for like the next whatever, nine years. I'm trying to like start directing movies and shit like that. So the photography thing kind of ties in. How did you meet Saphir? 
Uh, so Safir has been like one of my favorite girl singers on SoundCloud, like ever since I can remember, ever since I've been like on SoundCloud, whatever in the scene. So I actually hit her up a few times before we actually met and I think she ignored me or something, but one time I DM'd her and she actually replied and we made a song and you know, we were just talking and stuff. And then when I came out to LA, we met in person and it just like clicked like that. So yeah, now that's my wife. <laughs> What's your craziest experience with drugs? I've been like, nine or ten months sober off of like everything but weed and drinking a beer here and there but before when i was doing crazy drugs the craziest experience was probably when i took like way too much of high potency molly or it was either molly or mda or something like that i don't know what it was but that shit had me feeling like i was in a vortex i was like going through like tunnels and shit when I was driving. and I had the worst anxiety attack ever. And that shit made me hate Molly or whatever the fuck I took. So no more drugs for me. <laughs> what type of kid were you in high school? In high school, uh, I don't know. I was kind of like an outcast. I don't know, I didn't have too many friends in high school. I went to like a private Catholic school, so it wasn't really my forte. I was rapping all through high school and all the kids would like make fun of me for trying to rap, but I loved it too much to like quit. And I'm happy I didn't, but I don't know. High school wasn't a great experience for me, but I was happy doing what I loved throughout high school. How did you and the Purpose members meet? So Purpose is a group that me and Black Sand recently made. It's like me, Black Sand, Suede, and Queasy, and Tim Lynch. And we all met on like separate occasions, but we've been like all hanging out for like the past like six, seven months, and we've just become like a really powerful group of friends. I met Kwaise like three or four years ago when I was doing shows in like Oakland and the Bay. And then I met Black Sand on like a random occasion, one of those times. And we kind of we kind of clicked then a little bit, but we didn't click like really until I got down here to L.A. And then that's when I met Tim Lynch and Suede. And we're just like the power group right now. We're, we're going to be making some crazy shit. How do you feel about the underground scene right now? Uh, like... Two years ago, the underground scene was nothing like it is right now. And I kind of liked it way more back then. But like, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of toxic, but it's, it's doing its own thing, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to separate myself from a lot of the fuck shit that I see happening and that I read. But, you know, it is what it is. Growing up in Rhode Island, have any impact on you musically? I think growing up on the East Coast in general kind of had an impact on me musically. Like I come over here to the West Coast and I know a lot of artists that are like really relevant to me that no one out here even knows. But like being like a rap artist on the East Coast, it was like, I don't know. I feel like if you're trying to be a rapper on the East Coast, like kind of like with New York rules, you, if you make a song, you gotta be able to rap it all the way through without fucking up. You gotta, you know, be diverse with your lyricism. I don't know, you gotta be diverse with your flows and stuff like that. It's a lot of like boom bap heads out there and shit like that, but East Coast, like doing shows out there, it's like the worst. All the old heads run the scenes and they don't want anyone new coming up they just want to be putting on for them and their friends and it, it was kind of shitty but that's like one of the main reasons why i came over to the west coast but i still put on for the east coast because i have supporters out there but it was not my favorite how was it working with peep uh i like started talking to peep like really early in his career when he maybe only had like four or five songs on his soundcloud 
I heard about him through like one of my friends, Gertrude, and I just hit him up because I really liked the few songs he had out. And we would talk like, you know, every few days or whatever. We'd FaceTime, we'd text, and we were just like trying to like, you know, make a few songs or whatever. And he was like, after a little bit of talking to him, like after a few weeks, he started getting thousands and thousands of followers every single day, like on SoundCloud. Like that was, that was fucked. But anyway, we would send each other opens back and forth. And we finally like made a song and then like, I had it in my possession, but I didn't release it. And then like, that was like, I think in between the period of him going from Long Island to Colorado and then Colorado to California. And at that point he was getting like really, really big on the internet. So he like told me to hold on to the song and not drop it. So I didn't. And then uh, after like a little bit, I like told him I wanted to drop it because I felt like the people would want to hear it. So then he said it was okay for me to drop it. I dropped it. And at this point in my career, like I know my verse was really shitty and like I mixed that all myself and stuff, but I leave it up for the people because I feel like the people should hear it. Like he did a really good job on it and stuff like that. So and I think like they'd want it. So yeah, no, it was really cool talking to him. And I got, I got to meet him when we both did a show in the Bay one time and he was a really good dude. You know, rest in peace, Pete.